Hi everyone, I'm Kurti Vidula, and today I'm going to talk about our SLMR paper titled Maneuvering Target Tracking Using Autoencoder Interacting Multiple Module Filter. Now, this is a joint work with Matthew Weiss, Randy Paffenroth, Joshua Ozaski, and Don Richard Brown, three from WPI. In this paper, we consider a hybrid model to track maneuvering targets and compare it against traditional camera filter based methods and pure machine learning methods. Let's get started. Now let's start with when and why we would need machine learning in dynamical systems. Typically, we use machine learning when we either have a model deficit or an algorithmic deficit. Now, Calmfilter comes with the caveat that we need to know all the parameters such as process noise and measurement noise covariances. Now, in the context of uh, Calmfilter, we have four such possible situations. We either don't know the model, we know the model, but we have the wrong parameters for the model. We assume a linear model, but the actual model is nonlinear. And finally, when we know the model and it is changing over time, this is called as model switching. We consider model switching in this paper. Now, in this context, we have two contributions. We solve the problem of model switching by using neural networks to assist a filter by leveraging the power of deep learning and mathematics in the service of developing a generalized time series uh, state estimation algorithm. And uh, so the second contribution, we consider an, an application here that is tracking maneuvering targets and numerically demonstrate that hybrid models such as autoencoder um, interactive multiple model outperform model-based approaches such as Canal filter and IMM and learning based approaches such as LSTM. Now, what is maneuvering target tracking? What is this application? Now, let's, let's see a simple application of uh, maneuvering target tracking here. Let's consider a trajectory of a flight that starts from the origin 0, 0, and moves along in the x axis along the blue line. We know what, what mode we are in. That means the Canal filter knows the model and the parameters for the constant velocity model and it optimally tracks that constant velocity. Uh, portion. Now then we shift to coordinated turn or the CT mode in the um, marked in red. Um, now within this CT mode, Confiter also knows the model. It has it, it has additional knowledge of angular velocity and can optimally track uh, the angular velocity and other states in this mode. Uh, now it takes the turn and comes back. Now it's we are, now we need to switch back to constant velocity mode. Now Confiter needs to shift to constant velocity mode again since we don't know um, when these things are going to happen. So that is the switching, switching from mode to mode. Uh, we don't know when the target is maneuvering, when we, uh, the, this entire process degrades uh, the kernel filter uh, and the kind of kernel filter performance as compared to, um, as compared to uh, uh, any standard uh, approach. That is, um, what it, what is the standard approach? Um, so, Current filters were invented first, and then we, then uh, Bar Shalom and others thought of trying out a bank of current filters in a model called interacting multiple model. This has a Markov operation process mixer, and uh, this has two modes: uh, current filter CV and current filter CP. Now this figure shows the block diagram of IMM, and this is a state-of-the-art method for model switching scenarios. Uh, now compared to this, KF, KF performs bad, but so this is the solution. Now he, we, here we present it for the modes, constant velocity and coordinate return. The idea is to have a bank of current filters along with a Markov addition process that takes in mixing and mode probabilities from the two current filters and computes an effective estimate of for means and covariances. Now this picture shows a single iteration of IMM. We can see that the estimated means and covariances evolve with each, each iteration while the KFs uh, are, are operating in parallel. Now, this model, while it uh, while it is uh, um, op, uh, while it is a good uh, approximation for um, this model switching, it is not an optimal model. It has a few drawbacks. That is, uh, it is a heuristic model designed to yield good performance only within uh, fixed class fixed structure algorithms, and there are no guarantees for its optimality. It is valid only uh, within this, but in, in a particular structure, and it is not known to be optimal on others. And it might give uh, unsatisfactory results for nonlinear target dynamics as well. Now, what is the solution? Since the IMM is not an optimal uh, optimal approach, uh, we we might want to approach it from a data-driven point of view. In this talk, we present the deep learning hybrid model to assist IMM in model switching. 
and we also leverage a technique called uh, domain randomization to account for its validity on real world data. Now let's see uh, what do we mean by a hybrid model. Uh, on the on the uh, left side in the blue, we have a bunch of uh, traditional state estimation and prediction models. On the on the on the right hand side, we, on yellow, we have pure machine learning models. Now hybrid models combine these two approaches. Uh, that means we keep the uh, time filter and IMM uh, framework intact and add neural networks or any uh, machine learning approach around this structure. Now let's see an example. Let's start with autoencoder kernel filter. Now this, um, the combination of autoencoder kernel filter merges the computational power of deep learning with the theoretical understanding of a simple and an elegant linear system. This was first proposed by Matthew Weiss, Randy Pafroth, and Josh Uzaski, a uh, few co-authors in this paper as well. Uh, this, the stack disk, the, the blue disk, represents the uh, values in each layers, and the vertical ellipsis indicates the omitted values, and the horizontal uh, ellipsis uh, uh, represents the omitted layers. Now, curly E and curly D represent the encoder and decoder mappings. Now, phi represents the in inputs and measurements that go inside the AEKF setup, and due to the presence of kernel filter, the roles of encoder and decoder portions of the AEKF vary slightly from a standard autoencoder. That is, the encoder and decoder portions of AKF ensure that the input and output of AKF are in the same space, but the goal is not to minimize the difference between the input and output, like in a standard auto encoder. But the difference is uh, the, uh, we have to, the goal is to minimize the difference between a filtered state estimate of the input and the ground truth of the input. Uh, now, the, the idea is that uh, neural networks typically lack mathematical principles that could be useful in guiding training. So when you combine uh, with well-known mathematical models such as kernel filter, certain design and training issues can be addressed in the kernel filter itself, and the um, neural network uh, can take care of other tasks. Now let's extend this concept to AEIMM. So we have the IMM from slide six and we slide five, and we bring it in in the latent space of the autoencoder. So the KF portion, the kernel filter portion, is replaced by an IMM. Uh, both AEKF and AIMM address the issue of me, uh, estimating uh, measurement covariances. So, uh, however, in the case of AIMM, we allow the uh, we allow the encoder portion for different measurements and their associated measurement covariances for each of the two KFs in this IMM, KFCB and KFCT, and these are represented by ZA, and RA, and ZB and RB. These are measurements and the corresponding measurement covariances. The primary motivation for this feature is that learning different measurements and associated measurement covariances for each KF uh, in the IMM will assist the Markov decision process mixer in weighing the appropriate KF. And this, in turn, will help the IMM uh, weigh the system dynamics appropriately. The multiple encoder outputs are passed to the two KFs uh, that output x hat A, x hat B, and P A and P B, respectively. And these are passed through the Markov decision process and that returns x m uh, x hat m and p m lastly uh, x hat m and p m are passed through the imm for the next iteration and they are also passed to the decoder which maps these values onto the final output we had basically um, the encoder portion of the neural network makes sure that it takes the real space and makes it easier for the imm in the middle to have better priors and the decoder portion makes sure that uh, the results are generalized to uh, test sets well now, what kind of a loss function do we want to use in this can, in, in this model? Um, in monolithic target tracking, the, since the primary objective is to use noisy measurements of moving object, for example, acquired by radar or something, uh, to estimate or predict state trajectories, we use phi as a true, val true value or the ground truth and phi hat uh, or, uh, as the estimated value at each iteration. And it has to be noted that the current estimates, the current, the phi hats depend, the phi hat i depends on all of its past estimates, phi hat i minus one, phi hat i minus two, and so on. So the loss function is a Frobenius norm between the ground truth and the estimated state. And during the training, we don't have access to ground truth in real life, right? So we use a, a concept from uh, robotics called domain randomization, which was proposed by Josh Tobin and which allows training over a range of parameters in simulation. Thus, we can overcome the need to have a ground, knowledge of ground truth in training a deep learning model. The main philosophy between the domain randomization is if there is enough variability in the simulated model, 
the real world is just one among the many variations learned in simulation. The goal is uh, to achieve a high degree of variability in simulation and uh, so that uh, we can make sure the real world being, uh, being modeled is present in one of those simulations. Uh, and this is possible when, uh, when the range of parameter randomization is bounded and informed periodically by domain knowledge. By randomizing these training parameters, the learned model will be robust enough to perform on the test cases whose parameters fall within the range of these randomized training parameters. So uh, the concept of domain randomization is appealing in its uh, simplicity and has performed well in literature and also in our own experiments. Now here's a short, uh, small demonstration over uh, for, for polynomials. Uh, this plot shows an example of a simulated training curve uh, with bimodal noise. The smooth line is the, the, smooth, the blue smooth line is the ground truth Taylor polynomial phi true with the points, the green points representing the ground truth with added noise. This is our phi noise. Now at each training epoch, a new, new simulated curve uh, uh, like this blue curve is generated and passed to the AKF. Now, uh, as a result, the AKF uh, will never see the same curve again twice because we randomize it. And, uh, and during this process, it will train the neural network to perform state estimation over an increasingly large, gen increasingly general family, such as uh, all, the f uh, all the set of functions in a Hilbert space. That is, uh, we are covering this parametric space by randomizing this parameter over the entire domain. And since the data is simulated, um, access to the ground truth is not problematic anymore. Now let's test this theory. Um, we, we, take, uh, we test this approach on simulated flight paths consisting of constant velocity segments interspersed with co coordinated turns. All the simulated paths uh, will start with the constant velocity motion in the horizontal direction and uh, with an initial velocity of 100 meters per second along the x-axis. At each turn, the corresponding turn radius is randomly selected um, um, between uniformly select, in, from a uniform uh, distribution between 200 meters and 300 meters. And along the turn direction, which can be clockwise or anti-clockwise, Gaussian noise is added and uh, to, these, to these paths. Now, using these paths, we compare the state estimation capabilities for, for the following models. Tunnel filter, IMM, IEKF, AIMM, and LSTM. Now, uh, since the state estimate and ground truth are two dimensional, the MSE is calculated by taking the Frobenius norm between state estimate and the ground truth. Now, let's look at some results. The plots shown here are for a single simulation. Each model's state estimation is then compared with the actual ground truth and the corresponding MSE is reported. Uh, note that in this space, the ground truth is used only for the model evaluation. It does not affect each model's state estimate in any way. Uh, IMM shows better performance than KF. It's not that surprising because IMM is an evolved model and it, it contains a bank of KFs. However, both of these models show improvement when you come when they when they are combined with a neural network. That is, hybrid models perform better. We can see that against KF, we have AIMM and a, a, a KF performing better. And in here, we can also see that the, the position MSE for these hybrid models is much smoother than the traditional models or the pure MM model. We perform thousands of simulations and the, average of, and the average values are listed in the table here. Now the KF and IMM have more difficulty estimating the ground truth on the turn especially than AKF and the AIMM. Uh, and we can also see that LSTM is performing particularly bad. The theory is that LSTM has trouble on the turns because it is simply looking at historical values, the past values, and does not have a dynamical model based on physics or Taylor expansion like these uh, model-based or hybrid models have. Furthermore, in the KF, the uh, contributions of the a priori estimate and the measurement innovation to the a priori estimate are weighed by Kalman gain. So that could be another reason. So that's the, that's the main result from the paper. Let's conclude things. Now, we extended the idea of AKF here and we developed a hybrid model, AIMM. We leveraged domain randomization for this purpose and we demonstrated a proof of concept using a simulated flight trajectory. While we use simulated flight paths to demonstrate here, it should also be noted that AIMM is designed in a general manner to make it applicable for any application or scenario where IMM is appropriate. So uh, thanks for listening to this talk and I hope you have a great day and see you all.